you know what is comprehensive sexuality education and comprehensive sexuality education is a uh, age and stage appropriate education for children and young people and and for everyone to be honest because i i personally know of many adults who are uh, who can use some form of sex ed and and you know there are uh, multiple examples that that i can state over here articles and even in the community around us with the awareness that has come around in the last few years through movements like me too um the cases of sexual and gender based violence har- harassment and and other things are increasing rapidly in our community and uh, and we felt like it was our responsibility to do something about that so through the torch bearers foundation we have decided to take a, a preventive and responsive approach to address sexual and gender based violence in india um so we're compromised of what we call the response wing and the prevention wing so i'll give you a little brief about the response wing although we won't be covering it in our presentation today so the response wing um concentrates on providing sexual assault evidence collection kits which are dna kits to medical institutions in india that are run by the government uh, so this is an effort to increase the yield of dna and promote uh, a thorough dna investigation when it comes to crimes of sexual assault because as we know and as it's been referenced time and time again um, dna is the strongest way to get a conviction when it comes to crimes of sexual abuse however in our country we don't have a standardized operating procedure or a response to collecting that dna which is being followed throughout the country so uh, the response wing supplies asha kits uh, which are uh, aimed at promoting the collection of dna and prevalence of justice in the criminal justice system the second wing which we have is called the prevention wing which is what we will be concentrating on today one of the core aspects that we cover through the prevention wing is called comprehensive sexuality education and um, it is aimed at improving uh, the future generations in the sense that we want to equip them with knowledge we want to equip them with information through education which promotes gender equality uh, sexual and gender based violence is deep rooted in gender equality inequality and that's something that we want to address so our vision is to address sexual and gender based violence in india through policy changes in these two categories when it comes to prosecution of sexual assault as well as education regarding sexuality and ground action and through the awareness that we create we want to catalyze change and we are very very excited to have you all here today with us to join us in that journey so i'll hand it over to rishi now so i'll be talking a little bit about um what exactly sexual and gender based violence is uh so sexual and gender based violence is violence that is directed at a person because of their sex or gender it involves coercion or forcing them to do something against their will the reason we're focusing on sexual and gender based violence is because uh, what we can see from the data and statistics available is that uh, it dispro- disproportionately affects minority groups and minority communities uh, and that's the reason we have chosen to focus on this area um, because as we'll see through the presentation uh, the, the kind of th- i mean i'm sure most people are already aware of you know what's happening in our country and even globally but we'll be covering it in some detail uh, i do want to give a trigger warning over here as well because some of the content that we are covering can be quite distressing uh, so if anybody feels uncomfortable or triggered or you know finds it overwhelming please feel free to step away from the presentation if you need to so with that uh, i want to come to the ground reality of the situation that we are seeing in india 
it is horrendous the kind of statistics the kind of news reports that are that are that we come across on a daily basis uh because we are working in this field because we are working in this area we also have uh, notifications that we get whenever you know, such kind of news pops up and it's you know multiple stories multiple news articles on a daily basis and what we can see is you know one of the statistic is that on an average in 2021 a crime against a woman is registered every 74 seconds in india that is uh that is just it's horrendous i i don't know how else to even put it yeah so so things are not okay and that is the reason we've chosen to focus on this and make this our uh, area of work uh one of the other things uh, to cover sexual and gender based violence is that you know it does not look um violence uh, in general it does not focus on even minority groups such as trans people or you know men in the queer community uh and in fact even legally there are no uh, measures to report rape or sexual assault for any gender other than women uh that that is that is how i mean the laws are in our country so things are pretty pretty drastic pretty dire and need attention need more effort and work from the public from the government from every sector that we can kind of think of as we can also see the 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 rates of crimes against women are, are steadily increasing there was a drop from 2019 to 2020 because of lockdown and you know everything that was happening because of covid which in itself was a pretty traumatic event i think globally but uh interestingly even during lockdown there were multiple news reports of how domestic violence had increased how uh, and you know if you do a simple google search you come across more than enough uh, evidence and data that that is being reported across across the country and and perhaps globally as well uh but yeah so so the overall crime against women dropped in 2020 which includes other uh, other crimes other than domestic violence but domestic violence actually spiked uh for women as well as children um and and I'll cover I'll cover that in our latest slide but as we see in 2021 the the rates actually surpassed even 2019 so it's like as soon as we you know as soon as lockdown ended it's like we suddenly uh, you know crossed the the previous threshold as well so yes all is not well um now looking at sexual and gender based violence against children uh part of this is covered under the pocso law which is the prevention of um prevention of sorry the protection of children against sexual offences um that covers the sexual uh, sexual offences and and you know sexual uh, crimes based that are uh, based on sexual sexual violence against children um this is again a very very horrendous the kind of statistics that are and and the kind of reports that are coming out are are extremely extremely distressing these are some news clips that we have highlighted you know even in the earlier slide and even on this slide but this is the kind of these are the kind of statistics and data that is coming up so one of the one of the things that is quite striking is that uh, in india a child is sexually abused every 15 minutes this is this is a report by the bbc based on government data most of our data and statistics that we have put on is from the national crime records bureau and from news articles that are taken from uh, trusted sources uh another another article and headline which we wanted to focus on was um the the suicide of uh, rv malhotra which uh, who was a student i think a 16 or 17 year old student in in bs uh, in delhi and he ended up uh, i mean he took his life by suicide uh, because of bullying and harassment around his sexuality uh so it's 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 very very distressing the kind of things that are happening so on this again we have some more statistics and data uh the two things that i wanted to focus on on this slide is that 
when we look at um, crimes against children, firstly uh, there was there was this, there, I think the one and only study uh, that was done by the government uh, was in 2007, according to which uh, there were around I think 13,000 or so respondents across 13 states in India. Out of the respondents, I mean, these were all children, and out of the respondents, uh, more than 50% reported some form of sexual abuse that they had endured. Uh, some of the other data is also highlights that, you know, 52%, 50, almost 53% of the respondents that reported sexual abuse were, were boys, and 47% were girls. Um, so even this myth of how, you know, uh, boys don't face this kind of, or men don't face kind of uh, abuse and violence. Is is just that? It's a myth. Uh, also, another thing that I wanted to highlight here was that most of the abusers, most of the perpetrators, are actually known to the victims uh, or the survivors of of abuse and violence. Uh, they are either relatives or you know people that are in close proximity to the family or to the child. This, this has again been verified and uh, is data that is consistent with bodies across the board that are working in this field. So this is the reason we kind of want to form torchbearers and work towards this goal of addressing these issues by increasing awareness and um, equipping people with, uh, with an understanding of their own bodies, their own rights, their own, you know, what, what kind of steps they can take. And education is a core to, as I, uh, you know, as I see it in, in this effort. So we come to, you know, what is comprehensive sexuality education? And comprehensive sexuality education is a age and stage appropriate education for children and young people and, and for everyone, to be honest because I, I personally know of many adults who are uh, who can use some form of sex ed and, and you know there are uh, multiple examples that, that I can state over here but uh, it's extremely important in understanding our own selves, our own sexuality, our biology, our you know rights our, uh, that we that we have the right to say no for example. So it doesn't cover just um, sex, it doesn't cover only, you know, what sex is and teaching about sex or permitting sexual activity. In fact, one of the things that we have seen is that um, in, in other countries where comprehensive sexuality education has been um, implemented, it actually delays the rate, uh, it delays the age of uh, sexual activity. Uh, and, and children and young people tend to be more uh, cautious when it comes to protection, when it comes to you know safeguarding themselves. So if you can see the screen, these are some of the topics. Uh, this is a screenshot from our website. So these are some of the topics that are covered in uh, comprehensive sexuality education. It involves understanding concepts like gender, sexual orientation, um, you know, marriage, violence and abuse, online safety, which is again a pretty important aspect which has come up in the last decade or, or more, where, uh, you know, predators and, um, yeah, predators are developing ways of seeking out children, of uh, targeting children. It's a dire, dire situation. So, some of the other things like boundaries and consent, how to how to set boundaries for yourself, how to communicate those boundaries, how to give consent, how to receive consent, how to say no to certain activities that may not be that we you know, we may not be comfortable with. Uh, this is all in line. So there's not a generic kind of thing of oh this applies. You know, um, it basically CSE aims to target the individual and their own uh, own personal ethics uh, values and boundaries uh, that that are in line with their their beliefs and worldviews.